Hey guys, welcome to video three of my ultimate nutrition setup. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to adjust your calories based on your goals, so weight loss or muscle gain. And then we're gonna talk about how to adjust your calories after that initial setup phase based on your results so that you continue making progress. So step one, you need to think about what the goal is. So if it's weight loss, we already know that we need to be in a calorie deficit, but by how much of a deficit is necessary. It depends on how much weight you want to lose per week. So a, rate, a good idea is to focus on a rate of weight loss per week based on your current level of body fat, as well as the amount of training that you're doing and the amount of performance that you want to kind of maintain. Ideally, you wanna be focusing on fat loss first and then focusing on performance, but to minimize muscle loss, to minimize uh, performance loss, going for a slower rate of weight loss per week is a good idea. So somewhere between a quarter to half percent of your body weight per week. After that, you can get faster if you've got more weight to lose or you're not too bothered about uh, maintaining performance. And in terms of working out that calorie level, it's 7,700 calories for one kilo of fat. So if you wanted to lose a kilo of fat per week and you were 100 kilos and that was 1% of your body weight loss per week, you would need to implement a 1,100 daily calorie deficit from your calories. Go back to the step before, take that away from your calories, work out your macros as I did, and then you've got your macronutrients. In terms of maintaining performance, keeping carbohydrates a bit higher is a great idea and then that means that more of your deficit can come from fats you can keep protein at the lower end and then that way you're still getting enough protein you've got plenty of calories for carbohydrates and you've got the minimal amount of fats needed for you to maintain hormonal health so that's a great way for athletes to lose body fat without affecting their performance slower rate of weight loss keep carbohydrates higher but you can decide the rate of weight loss based on how much weight you want to lose per week but don't go too high if you're already very lean. If you're very lean, keep it toward the lower end. Don't get greedy and try and shoot for more weight loss because you'll be more likely to lose muscle tissue, which is just gonna make you look skinny fat, make you feel awful, affect your performance. You're just not gonna have a great time doing it. It's gonna be harder to stick to as well. If you are looking for muscle gain, you need a surplus. Again, the rate of muscle gain depends on how far advanced you are as a trainee. The longer you've been training, the slower muscle gain is going to be and the more likely you are to gain muscle, uh, fat tissue. If you're a newbie at this, you can lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. You're in the best place possible. But for the rest of us, it's not as simple as that. This is why advanced athletes go through cuts and gaining phases because they have to in order to get the best results. So muscle gain, 0.5% body weight per month, 1% body weight per month, 1.5% body weight per month, somewhere around there if you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced trainee. And there, there you go, right? You set it up that way, and then you start to adjust based on results. So in terms of results, you need to take your average body weight. I would recommend waiting four weeks after you've set up a nutrition phase to see what's going on, to get rid of any outlying data. When you first go through a weight loss phase, weight is gonna be lost quite initially due to water weight losses. After that, you can adjust every second week based on your average progress. If you're on track with your weight loss or muscle gain, you don't need to do anything. If you're not on track, you can make slight adjustments based on your adherence. If you've been perfectly adherent and you haven't seen the progress, you can lower your calories very, very slightly in order to see some progress. If you haven't been adherent or you haven't been sleeping well, you haven't trained as often, or there's something else that's happened within that week, then don't make any adjustments. Along with your average body weight, take photos every four weeks and take measurements around your waist and around your stomach in order to see if things are moving forward. Because oftentimes body weight might stall, but you might be losing body fat. And body weight can stall for a number of reasons, cortisol increases, eating more carbohydrates, uh, not sleeping as well, any kind of a, a million factors to one that why body weight might stall. So. Don't preemptively cut your calories until you've gone kind of through that checklist uh, of making progress. And that's it, right? I've told you how to set up your diet from square one to square three or square four, whatever you wanna call it. Those are the steps that you need to take 
After that, it comes down to periodizing your nutrition based upon your goals and playing the long game. Fat loss isn't something you want to do forever. Okay, after you've lost the body fat that you want to lose, you're going to bring yourself out of a deficit and all you need to do with that is to calculate a new maintenance. So you take your new body weight, your new activity levels and you go through the steps in the second video to calculate a new maintenance and then you go from there. Training and nutrition for the long haul is as simple as just changing things based upon your goals but the long term goal should be calorie maintenance and weight maintenance for the long term. But for short term fixes, those are my three videos for you. I hope you've taken a lot from these. If you have any questions about them, please feel free to message me. In the next video, we're gonna start talking about training and setting up the perfect, perfect training program for you based upon your current goals.